Oh yes, I have my new codex. I've got my Grey Knights. I'm so uh, so excited with the new hex fire that's come out. That is on its way to me uh, right now. But I've uh, already jumped the gun, and I got myself the new Grey Knight Codex. And let me just fish them out. They're down here somewhere. My Terminators. I'm gonna start off by building these guys. Uh, I just love the way that the silver looks on these. They're fantastic. Um, now, if anyone uh, who hasn't seen any of the Grey Knight stuff, um, I love the fact that their troops are basically in two boxes. You've got your Terminators or your, your Paladins, and you've got your uh, regular Space Marines. So that's pretty much all your troops come as. So the great thing with this box is you've got several choices. Now, I'm going to build these guys as uh, uh, the Paladins. Now, the option on the back is to have your Brotherhood Terminators. Now, the only real difference between the Brotherhood uh, guys and the Paladins is simply the weapon skill, and the Paladins is a bit higher, and the Brotherhoods have uh, the option of one special weapon, and the Paladins uh, can actually have two. So I'm going to build myself um, the Paladins. Now, the front of the box is a bit strange because you've got um, three Paladins here, and if I get the uh, glare of the camera off there, you've got yourself an Ancient and an Apothecary. So you can have two characters, uh, three Paladins, or you can make five Paladins, or you can have uh, five of the Brotherhood Terminators. Now I'm going to be getting some more of these, so I I'll probably do all of them. Um, but I'll just uh, I'll pull out the stuff in the box and show you all the cool weapons and all the other options that you get. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start to paint them up. Now, just before I open the box, I've got myself... The, uh, the paint that we need to, so it's uh, it's a blue uh, silver colour, it goes on quite well, it seems to have separated a bit, I did shake this up before actually, let's give it another go, uh, but the uh, the Grey Knight steel is uh, definitely something I'm going to be using with some uh, blue washes and probably iron hand steel. Now I'm going to try something a little different on these, I'm actually going to use a base coat of lead belcher and we will see how that turns out, so I've got my lead belcher I've got my Grey Knight Steel, I've got uh, some uh, more colours to go through. Uh, it should be fairly uh, quick and speedy to do the main uh, parts of these guys, and I'll probably do all the little bits and pieces separately. So um, let's get all the stuff out of the box, I'll show you all the things that you get. Right, so the uh, contents of the box. So you have the, uh, the Grey Knights and the Terminators on the front, a um, little bit more detail on them. And I will uh, just have a quick flick through of all the different options, including making the uh, the Ancient and the Apothecary and all the different combos. Now you do get quite a lot on the sprues. Um, so to show the first one, which has basically got all of the uh, the bodies, uh, Storm Bolters, and all of the little pieces that go on the, uh, on the back of them. And here we go, here's some of the, uh, the weapons. You've got your Nemesis Swords here, which is probably what I'm going to use because having a look in the uh, in the book before I build them, you can give them um, the swords, you can give them the uh, falchions, the little swords, and you can give them the halberds. Now the halberds give you an extra bit of strength, um, but I would prefer, rather than having the extra attacks as well with the falchions, I would rather have the uh, swords, as you see on the front of the box, give you a little bit more armor penetration on there. But uh, the usual quality, of Games Workshop stuff is there and I am so looking forward to painting these guys. Uh, faces ready to go. I will probably do my usual uh, uh, mud texture before I spray them then I can do all of the uh, all the basing at the end. Uh, I'm going to paint these reasonably quickly because it's all metal. The coverage of the uh, of the steels, uh, the, the grey knights and the, uh, the iron hands is really really good. So um, Yes, uh, what we'll do is I'll start building some of these guys and show you how quick and easy it is to paint them. Right, so I've had a, a little bit of a think because my um, my hex fire hasn't actually arrived yet. Um, <laughs> little disappointed, um, they seem to have lost my address, which is kind of weird. Um, so a little bit disappointed, but it's given me time to think about what I want to do. Um, with these guys, so I am going to make them as, as paladins as opposed to the uh, the uh, Brotherhood because the paladins hit on twos and the Brotherhood hit on threes so why not, if you're going to build some terminators let's just go straight in and get the hard hitting ones so um, the way I'm going to do it I've, uh, after a bit of careful thought 
is I'm going to give um, all of them um, the Nemesis Swords, apart from my um, guy charge, which is the Just a Car, is it? Yeah, just a car. Uh, he's actually going to get the hammer uh, instead. Now, he's not shown on here, but I think he can have that and he'll, he'll look cool. Might as well distinguish him. So I'll, uh, I'll build everything. I will leave the heads and the shield separate. I can spray those white because I'm going to give these guys white helmets just to differentiate them. Um, so I can attach those afterwards. Uh, also, his little um, loincloth piece at the bottom, I will do that separately as well so I can undercut that white and give it a nice coat of red. Um, so it looks a little bit nicer. So that's how I'm going to uh, build these guys. The other thing with the paladins, I believe they can have two special weapons. So if I find my special weapon sprue, wherever it is. Okay, I'm not seeing it. Here we go. Um, now you only get one of each, um, which is a bit of a shame. Um, because I was looking at the stats of some of the weapons. So I'm going to give them the silencer and the side cannon. And the flame rye will leave off on this, uh, this particular unit. Maybe if I get a... Th third now the second squad will probably just have a uh, flamer but the no no the second squad will have a side cannon and the um, third squad will have two uh, two flamethrowers I believe that's the way to go so they're gonna have plenty of punch they'll have long-range firepower and the swords will give them the extra armor penetration that I need so I'll start cutting all these guys out now and then let's see how it goes when it moves on to painting Okay, let's get started uh, by doing some nipping. My nippers aren't in the uh, best of condition because I've lost a spring, <laughs> uh, but they still function, so um, I'm going to just get cracking and start uh, cutting these off. Um, yeah, so a little bit disappointed with my uh, my uh, hex fire not having arrived because uh, I was basically uh, starting my terminators with a look uh, to build uh, an entire Grey Knight's force. So um, that's uh, that's the legs number two. Uh, number eight for the uh, for the body and um, yeah so I'm going to be undercoating these with lead belcher as a base because I haven't tried that uh, particular style yet so it's all about trial and error uh, my lead belcher is not to hand but uh, once I've done that I'm going to go for uh, grey knight steel and I will be shading that with my blue which I don't quite have to hand yet but that's going to be the basic uh, scheme of it then I will uh, attach all of the white parts I've done uh, afterwards so they're all near enough assembled and I'll uh, finish the painting off then because I think that's the most efficient way of um, of doing that um, number seven I'm looking for there we go let's uh, give this a little snip Yeah, the plastic feels really good actually. It's a nice little snipping sound as I'm taking all the pieces off. Uh, seven, eight, number two. I won't take off number one just yet because what I tend to do if I find you the heads, no, I'll, I'll show you with the shields. Um, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll clip the entire frame free and uh, spray them all on the sprue uh, separately. The heads will be a little bit easier to um, to paint. Um, what I, let me show you on here. Uh, I'll probably snip that off, um, snip that off, snip that off down there. I've got a nice little rail. I can mount that to my nice little wooden block, give it all a spray, and I can nip them off from there. That's probably the most efficient way of doing it. Um, there's the hammer, actually. Let's uh, While I've got that, let's give that a cut. Oops. Don't stress it, don't break it. There we go. Okay, so that's that done. So I've got his weapon, his legs. 59, 66 for his arms. And the problem is, is the arms are all over the place. Let's go to here. Here we go. Um, so 59 is this one. Let's give this a trim. Get it nice and close. There we go, that's 59. 66, where are you? Well, not too far. Oh, that's a weird looking, weird looking nub. But the uh, shoulder pad covers it all, I guess, so it shan't be too bad. Got a admit these frames are making a nice little 
and all these when I'm cutting off, which means the plastic's pretty decent. I hate it when you get this mushy, you no know, click sound on them, and um, you feel like you're probably making a mess and chewing them up. Uh, right, what have we got? 27 and 33. Number 27, that's actually already loose on the sprue. and 33 which is over here which is that one and that one okay so that's the the main part minus the head do I want to put that on as well 116 the little decorative piece on the back Hiding all the way over here. Right. Well, that is quite delicate. Oh, I think I've stressed that. Yeah, that's not the best sprue placement. I probably should have used a knife to cut this off, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, should be fine with that. Okay, so this, that, that. Oh no, we need the storm bolter. And I'm not going to put any demon head on it. Because um, I want to paint this reasonably quick. So we'll just go for the fist. So I'm looking for 101 and 75. Uh, there we go. One oh one. Oof. And where will the fist be? Could be absolutely anywhere. Ah, aha, 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 70, 75, there it is, ah, he's pointing, that's why, there we go, 75, I'll give these a very uh, quick trim with a knife just to make sure everything's Everything's nice. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Um, let's just make sure his legs are okay. Oh, I might need to switch to a, a file. It's not super sharp, this knife. It's good enough. So there's no danger to my fingers, whether you cut towards yourself or away. I might need to go down to a sanding stick. These are pretty useful. It's not a high grit, it's a really, really fine grit, this one. It's as polishes it as much as anything else, but it will take any bits and pieces off there. A little tiny bit left. Okay. Actually, these snips have done a pretty clean job for something that's done some work over the years. Oops. Right, okay, uh, I'll keep going with this and we'll do a little jump cut to the next part where I just start putting them together. And we'll see how well everything fits as well. Okay. Yeah, this needs 
some more trimming. Right, okay, let's jump to some uh, let's jump to some gluing. Okay, let's do some uh, some gluing. I've got my contactor adhesive. I quite like using this stuff. It's quite good and easy to control. Don't need to put too much on. Uh, I do sometimes use my super thin Tamiya. That works quite well. But that's good enough. Okay. Let's get these bodies on. I don't... Oh, there's quite a room for a bit of dynamic posing on there, but we'll see how that works out. Nice little healthy amount on the bottom. So I'm not planning on sticking this guy to the base until the end, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So there we go. That's already the body sorted. Um, probably will need to. Oh, hang on, I totally forgot after all that. Let's just trim that down. Very little trimming needed to be honest, but it does look a little bit scruffy. Uh, a lot of the um, the primer hides all these sins anyway, so you don't have to worry too much about getting everything absolutely perfect. Um, because once it's primed, you really, really don't see it. It's it's not a it's not a big deal. Um, now I don't even know how to stop. Let's just move all the bits. <laughs> How does that fit? How does that fit? Oh, it must go, uh, go sideways. Why am I even thinking that? <laughs> Make a complete hash of it. Right. That's where it goes. It sits on there. Might be worth putting the fist on first, actually. Where did this fist go? Search tiny work. Yes, I'm going to put his fist on first, I think. And there we go. Let's... Uh, Pop on this storm bolter. Uh, why do you not go on? It's got a little tiny ridge on that, which you have to navigate by feel. But there we go, that's on. And we are going for the shoulder pad next. Let's, let's put the shoulder pad on next. I don't think it's going to interfere with anything else. Let's put a little bit of glue on there. Okay, I think we'll go straight for the the fit. These guys should be able to go together quite well. And that didn't work out quite so well for the shoulder pad. We'll hold that in place. Oops. I apologise, I was just trying to look at the camera and hold him in situ. I do believe that's good enough. Okay, that's him sorted. Right. Does the hand fit? The hand certainly does fit. Nice and easy. Let's give that a go. Glue on there. Oh, 
maybe it doesn't fit quite as well as I thought it would. Does that look does that look all right there? Does that look okay? I think it well it'll do. It's on now, so no. Nah. Um, <laughs> fighting with me a little bit, but um, let's go for. Just want to hold this in place because it's uh, got a little bit of give in there still. Yeah, I'm liking that pose. That's looking pretty sweet. Let's um, get some more glue on there. And well, that went on quite easy. Let's have a look. Yep, happy with that. That's looking pretty sweet. There we go. And the finishing touch on the back. I don't know if that's a piece of flash or not. That looks like a piece of flash. Yes, it is. I need to trim that off. Let's um, get the snips. I thought, um, if I can just get a close-up, I thought that piece there was uh, slotted into the back, but it's actually something I need to trim off. So, doink, wherever that went is fine. Okay, let's make sure that I'm happy with that. Put some glue on there straight away. And... Let's put that on. Okay, I'm not going to tilt him back because I'm going to need that to stay. Glue some. Oh no, there we go. That's what happens when you rush, guys. All right, what I'm going to do? I'm not going to move him around too much. I let that glue go off and I will build all of the other ones up um, I won't show all of that I'll build them all off camera and basically we can move on to the next step okay here we go so these guys have all been built and painted um, slightly disappointed with this guy because they only give you one arm that can hold a special weapon um, had unfortunate that um, but he's uh, he's all built up ready to go so I've got myself this fella these are the guys oops still blue still drying a little bit that's the actual uh, arm that can hold a special weapon so um, yep yeah, there we go oh, got a little bit more uh, trimming to do on these got this guy This guy's keeping his storm bottle quite close to his chest. And the one with the hammer. Because you need a hammer. Because hammers are cool. Oh yeah. Right, so uh, I did decide to glue these onto the bases. Um, just because there's plenty of room to actually base them with. Uh, I just thought, well, less fiddly. It's all about trying to be efficient with uh, with painting them. want to build them and paint them as, uh, as quickly as I can. So, um... Like I said, I'm going to be uh, spraying these guys with lead belcher, the helmets, uh, any purity seals, all the extra bits and pieces I'm going to spray white, do them separately, glue them on afterwards because we're going to be going to town. Ooh, let's show that with our grey night steel. I'll be using my army painter brushes because I love these, these are fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so now it's time to do some spraying. Right, so we've got to the really exciting part now, where uh, everything's been primed, built and ready. Um, show these guys with the uh, the lead belcher. And that goes on really nice, straight onto plastic. It provides a really good base, ready for my base coating. Uh, you can see I've painted everything uh, white, all the little bits and pieces. I kind of leave a lot of things on the sprue. Um, let's just bring that nice close. You can see all of the, uh, the heads all ready to go on. So 
I've got a few spares in case of making any mistakes. All of the uh, purity seals, and again, I've got his, uh, his loincloth piece there. Uh, ready to go, it's my little handy dandy uh, piece of MDF stick. It's been uh, serving me for years, <laughs> it's been uh, really good for doing all the priming. So, I've got my brushes uh, predominantly going to be using my dry brushes to get everything sorted. And I think next it's time to start painting.
Okay, so um, I've got over these guys again just with a uh, another brush just to make sure I've not missed any uh, bits and pieces. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go over with some uh, Dragon Off Nightshade and uh, we'll shade all of this in. Using a reasonably sized brush for it, nothing anything uh, special. But I prefer to use a larger brush just so I can soak up any, any extra. So, um, let's just get going on this guy and uh, we'll see how he turns out. So, let's... Uh, Take it straight from the pot, not do anything too special with it. Put plenty on. Just make sure I take off any so it doesn't pull too much. Stick to it all in the recesses. Okay, so that's the effect I'm looking for. I'll go over all the rest of them now and then it'll be on to the next step once they're dry. Okay, so uh, these guys are all uh, washed up, if I can show you that, looking pretty sweet. Uh, while they're drying off, uh, I'm going to work on my stick of all the bits and pieces that I'm going to be doing uh, white, which will be uh, the helmets and the shields. Uh, right, okay, let's take this off. Ooh. I do have uh, some little clamps, but uh, I'm only going to be uh, working on the top ones. So uh, I'm going back to a Citadel brush this time, a layer brush. I've got a nice little thin coat. Okay. Oh, sorry. I forgot to tell you. Ferrisian grey. That's what I'm going for. Just to give it a, a bit of a light shade. I'm probably going to half and half these uh, red because I want some, uh, some red colouring on them. Um, but Fenrisian Grey works really well as a shade on white. It's uh, you don't have to be too uh, careful about the kind of ratios either. It just seems to come out naturally, uh, really nice. So I'll paint these ones up nice and quick. I'll probably give them a dry brush of um, white afterwards, just to get the tops looking right. But you don't have to be too careful. Again, with most of the things I'm doing on the Grey Nights, you don't have to be super careful and precise. Um, but basically, uh, that's all I've done. Just give them a nice little uh, bit of depth there. I don't like going darker with their shades on white. Um, from Rouge and Grey is kind of the perfect colour for that, really, I think. But uh, I'll either leave them white or I'll do uh, one half of them uh, red. I'm not going to paint any metallic colours on them. I'm just going to have these either pure white or pure red. We'll see how they come out. I'm really not too sure. Uh, I mean, I can paint these ones up as well. Use them as a test and see how they come out, maybe. Get them just a little light shade on there. All right, okay, and uh, then that's the uh, that's the shields done. I will quickly show you the uh, the helmets as well. Let's uh, let's go for a little row of the helmets. We'll see how they turn out. Oh, let me see if I can get a focus for you. While I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. I haven't decided if I'm going to give them all helms yet or I'm going to paint one of the uh, the exposed heads. I'm not brilliant at doing faces, faces um, but uh, these guys are going to turn out uh, pretty quickly. Got a lot of uh, I've got a lot of painting to do, so we'll do them quite quite fast. Right, okay, so that is a bit of a shade, and they're going to get dry brush later on. I could use one of those two faces. The, I mean, the sculpts are really nice. Let's see how close I can get. The sculpts are really good for the faces, so it might be a shame not to use them, but we'll see how that turns out. So I will uh, do all the rest of the helms. And move on to the next part and hopefully these guys will be dry quite soon but they are looking 
very tasty. A little bit too blue, but uh, that's going to get brought back, so don't worry too much about that. And on to the next stage. Okay, going to paint um, this piece next, just got it on a stick. I'm going to go for Mephisto on Red on this one, nice, quick and easy uh, easy coat of paint. In fact, I probably should have pre-mixed it before I, uh, I started recording. But uh, let's get some water in there. Okay. Now, the uh, this spraying has left some shadows in there, so I think with the combination of the sculpt and the spray, I should get some natural shadows, which I'm going to ink wash it anyway. But um, uh, let's give it a paint. Do the back as well, just the parts I can reach. I'll go over the rest of that later. Do the whole thing uh, red, I think. Okay, so maybe another coat over the top of that, but it's going to get an ink wash as well, so I'm not going to worry too much. That's that done, on to the next step. Okay, these guys are all uh, dried off. It's time for some Iron Hands steel and I'm gonna be using a, a quite a substantial dry brush. And we will start off giving them a coat of Iron Hands steel. Let me just wipe all of this. Pretty much what I want. Yep. Okay. It's time to do some dry brushing. Let's see how. Oh, my camera's not happy. Okay, let's go over that a few more times. Okay, so there's the iron hand steel dry brush on top. So I will do the rest and then we'll move on. Okay, I've jumped ahead a little bit here. Um, I've uh, done some more painting on these guys. I'll show you where I'm up to on the next stage. I've just done some simple paint jobs. Now I started with, oh, turn it around, Auric Armour Gold. So I painted all of the gold sections on here. And I've gone over with the best way of painting gold, hands down best way of doing it, whichever gold you want to use. Give it a wash of contrast, gillum and flesh, because that is literally all I've done on all the gold sections on here. Let's see if I can bring it a little bit closer so you can see it. Beautiful. Okay, so I've done those. Uh, as you can see, I've done the blade ready to paint that with Temple Guard Blue. 
which I will be shading very very shortly with Canto Blue and going for the um, the um, NMM non-metal effect uh, without using metallics um, and makes them all nice and shiny and glowy because I want the Nemesis Force weapons to, um, to look really good. I've also done the shields for the shoulders so I've just used some red uh, let me find the red there it is some contrast Blood Angels red so straight out of the bottle straight down the middle I use a slightly different gold which is my favorite gold which is Retributor armor and again gone over the top with that contrast as well and I've done a simple red and a red wash just over that which I'll put on in a second and the heads I still haven't decided what I'm doing with the heads I've literally just base coated their faces ready for some highlighting I dry brush white and put some uh, red in the eyes so I've got plenty of heads when I've decided what I'm going to do if I make an absolute hash <laughs> of uh, the faces then um, yeah I'll just switch to the helms so let's just give you an idea of what this guy's going to look like Ooh. something like that I've got a loose one here that's going to sit on there and he's going to have his helmet on top or possibly helmetless I ha again I haven't decided yet so I've done a few steps just to cut some stages out but that's uh, the, the uh, just uh, take these off that's the uh, section that I'm up to now so pretty quick paint job very very effective they look beautiful I'm probably going to start um, drilling out the holes because I don't usually drill the holes out on the weapons but it's probably going to help sell it a little bit better especially since I haven't sanded quite so well on the end of the guns so I've done it with all these guys still got to do all of the purity seals which I have a little bit of red on. I've got extra purity seals here. Left them on the sprue. I'll touch the red up once I've trimmed them off. Um, so the next stage I would say is I'll either start on the books on the back, which I'll do in a dark red. Uh, Rakarth flesh. Have I got my Rakarth flesh? On purity seals and all the pages of the books are going to be Rakarth flesh. Obviously, it needs a good shake. I've not touched it for a while to get rid of all that. So it's a, a nice even colour. Um, so that's where we're up to so far, and it's going to be on to the next stage.
Okay, now it's time to tie some stuff together with some washes. Um, yeah, most of the base coating is done. I mean, these guys aren't perfect. I'll admit they're not my best work I've ever done, but I, I'm, I'm still very, very pleased with them. Absolutely. Um, just some shading, and then the next step will be to start doing some final assembly and uh, finishing off all the little details such as the swords because they're looking a bit plain and boring right now. Um, I am very much loving the, if the camera will focus on the red, using that um, red contrast over the top of the metallic to give it a nice like sheen, rather than having a plain red. And the same with the, uh, with the storm bolters. So um, there's just gonna be some Agrax Earthshade. Sorry, not Agrax Earthshade, I'll go for Reichland. Yes, I pulled the first two out of the box. <laughs> so we'll go for some Reichland, I think. We'll tie that together with that. I don't think it makes an awful lot of difference when I'm going over the top of the gold. And then uh, some Null Oil on uh, some more of the weapons just to darken them out and separate them out a little bit. So it's that. Then it's some final assembly. And then the uh, the swords. Um, yeah, I am um, very pleased with that blue effect. Still lots of things I could paint on them, but I want to kind of get them to a good standard and, uh, and uh, battle ready. So um, on to the next stage.
Oh, these guys are looking beautiful now. Um, I've just, um, off camera, I've just done a little bit of drilling. If I can get it to focus. Please focus, thank you. Um, so I've drilled out the uh, the barrels on their guns, so uh, they're all ready to go. Uh, I'm going to start doing some uh, pre-basing now. Um, so I've got the fantastic... There we go, still a mud. So I'm going to dollop this out. I've got myself a nice little stirrer here, and uh, we'll start scooping out, and we'll put the stuff on the base. Okay, I've got these guys looking fantastic now. I've um, drilled out the gun barrels on the sides and the front, so uh, they look a little bit more realistic. It sells the whole thing uh, a little bit better. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is some uh, basing. I'll get um, the stirler mud and my stirrer, which I've shaved down with a knife, just so I can scoop it out. You'll see when I start layering it on, it's, uh, it's beautiful stuff. I plan to do the outside edges with Bane Blade Brow, which is my next colour. Uh, once I've done that, I'll put some tufts and some other bits and pieces around the bases, and that'll be the bases done. And then we are on the home straight. So um, let's get going with the Sterling Mud. Lovely. In fact, I'm going to give it a, a shake. So I'll get some of it in the, uh, in the lip at the top. So it's particularly goopy, so when you bring it out, you end up with a nice big fat dollop like that. So I'm just going to pick up one of these guys and I will start putting it on the base. So you literally just splooge the stuff all over. Oh man, I love messing with this stuff. You can't really sculpt it, it doesn't hold its shape uh, particularly uh, particularly well but it's a great material for putting on the bases so I know I should really have a holder but uh, I don't have one so <laughs> you've got to work with what you've got um, and we'll just gloop this stuff all around the base once I've done these I'll move on and do a coat on the side with the Bane Blade Brown and we will enter the straight uh, I've got my tape here ready to, um, to do the blades because they look focus and they do look a bit boring in plain and we'll get those blades done and I think we'll be, be we'll be uh, battle ready okay so I've started off by getting some tape and taping over one half of the blade I've got four different uh, shades of my temple guard blue so I'm just going to pick two areas and I'm just going to uh, highlight those up and then I can put some dark areas in the middle. So it's uh, it's fairly subtle, it's quite thin. Let's see if I can actually do this on camera while I'm at a funny angle looking through my lens and the camera's on. So let's uh, get it set up. Okay.
Right, we're up to um, a really nice stage now on uh, on my models. Um, I've uh, I've done the swords. I've even done some sanding just to get rid of some of the more uh, obvious stuff off these guys who are looking. <laughs> Oh, so so nice. Uh, so I've done the bane blade brown. The um, the basin's pretty much the next stage. Now the stuff that I like to use. This stuff's brilliant. This is uh, Army Painter Brown Battleground. Uh, super nice and simple to use. You just basically put wherever you want, dip it in, done. Um, and that's going to get stuck down with some uh, some PVA glue that I have. I'm going to be using the uh, Army Painter Jungle Tufts. I have some other tufts as well, some uh, desert ones, but these work on just about everything really. Uh, not specifically for a jungle, as you can see. Uh, I have some uh, little bag of flock as well. I might use a little bit of that. I don't use a lot of it. I don't coat the whole base in it. Um, it's good for mixing with uh, gravels and things as well. But uh, I'll put a little bit of that on as well, I think. Uh, just before I tackle it, I'm going to go back to my Bane Blade Brown and I'll do some dry brushing just on the uh, on the bases of these guys. Uh, I will freely admit, in case you hadn't noticed, that I had forgotten to put his fist on while I was building it. It's not the best pose in the world for this uh, this guy, but um, yeah, his fist is all done. And that's it. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I was going to add this to it. This is a shoulder piece, uh, according to the instructions, sits on... The top of his shoulder here but doesn't seem to attach to anything um, it's really hard to show you but I painted it up with what did I use uh, canoptic alloy from my Necrons uh, with a null, null oil wash over the top of that but it just doesn't seem to to fit and it's going to be quite fragile as well so although I was going to drill a hole and, and pop that in I've decided not to bother I will save that for something else it'll go in my bits box with all my other parts. Um, so uh, it's time to start doing some basing. Right, okay, I'm ready to start doing a little bit of gluing now. I've got some glue ready. I tend to use uh, Gorilla Wood glue from the basing. Um, you get quite a lot for not a lot of money. It's about six pounds, I think, for for one of these. Um, so I've got some of that blobbed to one side. I've decided I might use some of my um, my cork. Might put up a couple of pieces of those down as well. And also, uh, I've still got uh, some of this stuff left. This is brilliant. It's actually, uh, let me just get it out of the box. So it's actually uh, razor wire. It's not really razor wire, but it gives you that effect. Um, might be quite useful if I put a piece down on some of these spaces here, but instead of it having quite wide loops, make it really, really tight looping. That'll give it a, a sense of scale a little bit more, so make the uh, paladins look a lot larger. So that might be something that's on the cards, but um, it's well worth using that stuff because if you're basing any kind of uh, sci-fi or military terrain, uh, that stuff's absolutely brilliant. So um, let's get started. Uh, we're doing some stuff. Well, I'll just show you my army painter palette here because I've got loads of stuff in here that I'm going to need, which is some tweezers and what else? A brush. This is the other good thing about that palette, actually. If I just show you, bring it across and show you. It's got a tray on the top. That covers all of the um, all the paint palette pads inside, so it's just a really handy thing to have with the um, little strap over the top. So if you are doing any painting and you use a wet palette, I love this uh, Army Painter stuff, uh, absolutely phenomenal. So can't recommend their gear enough. So let's start off with some brown battleground basing. There we go. That's the stuff. So it's quite soft. 
and it gives you a, a nice bit of ground scatter. I'm not going to cover all of the bases on these guys, I'll do some uh, selective areas. So I'll get some of my rather gungy glue. Probably not the best brush I could have used for this, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to be, um, it's probably going to get thrown out after this anyway. Uh, and we'll just uh, blob some of this stuff down in a certain area, like that. Okay, and we shall give him a little dip. And that gives you some of this scatter in that area. So I'll do a few blobs around on this guy's base. I'll do the rest of the bases and I'll show you the next step. Okay. Let's take some uh, some tufts of these on. Um, so I just grab them with the tweezers, lift them up, and let's pop that one on there. I'll give it a press down so it should stay. So there we go. Got a grass tuft on that guy. If my camera focuses, thank you very much. So I'll put some more of these on now. So there we go, got some more grass tufts on there. Next stage for the basing, I'm not going to overdo it too much. Don't want to take away from the uh, these these guys, how good they look. And they've all got a little bit of uh, grass tufting on. Um, the next thing I think we'll have a look at is some rocks. So I'll just tip a few of these out. See if there's any other look. Because you can break this stuff up really quickly as well, which is which is kind of cool. Um, basically, all I'm going to do, because this glue will hold it quite well, is to dip it in the glue and drop a piece on the base. So you've got a piece of corking on the base now as well. So that gives them all a little bit of interest. I'll do the rest of these. Uh, they don't need to be massive. We'll drop those all in place. I'll give him that one. That one looks quite interesting. Push it right down in the back. Nope. Oh, tweezers stuck to it. That's him. And a that all have to be big. I'll put a small one. In there, that one's a little bit large, so I should break that up. Just torn up, and we shall put this guy on there. So they've all got some interesting bases. Now, to all intents and purposes, these guys are all battlefield ready now. So let's. Uh, Give you a close up of each of them with their swords, with their guns. I love the way that red's come out as well, it looks amazing. Brilliant, these guys are all ready to go on the battlefield now. I am extremely pleased with them. Now, I will admit, it's not my best work. I do not claim to be the world's greatest painter by uh, by any means, but these are all techniques that anybody can do with some brushes. 
Yeah, it's great to have some extra nice tools, uh, especially can't recommend my army painter stuff enough. I do have a lot of Citadel brushes as well, um, but um, the army painter stuff does the uh, the back breaking of the work, mainly my uh, regiment brush and my detail brush. Uh, my uh, base materials, my paint palette, I love that thing to bits. I've got, uh, in fact, I've got all my spare pads all for that one. That's that's it. So basically, I'd like to thank all you guys uh, for staying around to watch. Uh, if you'd like to see any more content from me, please do let me know. Um, if, if this is more stuff you want to see, I would love some uh, likes and subs. That would be amazing. That would help my channel uh, grow a lot. And it will uh, inspire me to do more videos and more content for you. So... Thank you very much uh, for watching, guys, and uh, thank you, and I will see you next time.